Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. Most people listening to this don't understand that many times before I channel, there is one who channels before me. The energy of Adiranda, beautiful. The words dripping with love and truth. Because when you put the channelers together, dear ones, they give you much the same message. I would like to continue my message of joy. This is one that I have been giving now for two days. This is number four of four. Finding joy in the midst of chaos. This particular channel is not instructive as much as energetic. For I want to give you the truth of joy. The real truth of joy. How is it seen by spirit, joy? How is it seen by humanity instinctively, joy? So I'm going to start with what you don't expect. I have given you information now for years that this planet wallows in old energy. And the whole reason I'm here is because that will change. That for eons, literally, humanity has been in a low consciousness state and never ever lifted itself out of it. Not really. It had peaceful times, but they always turned into war yet again. There was never a coherence in humanity. There was always mistrust, mostly between those of different countries who didn't talk to one another, or even if they could, their leaders wouldn't let them. This is a low consciousness planet for so long, and now it begins to shift. But let's talk about joy, happiness, the intuitive attribute of smiling. My partner has been around the planet and has learned much. He was not prepared necessarily for the greetings he got in two countries. I will have it remain nameless. And in those countries he was informed he smiled too much. And he he was taken aback by that and he said, what do you mean? And they said, well, in our culture, smiling is not really something you should do because it means you're hiding something. You see, the one who smiles is a dishonest person, he was told. He didn't pay attention to that. He did it more just because that was his reaction to having that news. He was in one of these countries in a small restaurant and a young person, barely 18 she was, bent down at his table and spoke quietly and she said, I see the internet all the time and it just seems like Americans, they, they smile all the time. Is it, is it really true, sir? because I know you're an American, I can see it. And my partner said to her, well, they don't smile all the time, but we do smile a lot. And, and he always remembered her reply. And she said, I'd like that to happen here. <laughs> That's the young people starting to watch the internet, starting to watch the internet, starting to see so many things they never saw before and learning something they never knew before. Why is joy something that gets suppressed as a condition of control? And the reason is because joy is one of the primary God energies of the creative source. If not the primary one. From those in those countries, I would like to talk to their mothers. Say, when you have the child, 
and it, you, you come home with a child and you're so enamored with a child, what do you do? What's the first intuition you do? Do you bend down over the child and teach them to frown? <laughs> and the answer is no. You poke them and you tickle them and you want them to smile, don't you? That is instinct. Every single mother knows this. You don't teach the child to be unhappy. That they will learn by themselves by watching you, if you so choose. But the first thing a mother does is to get that child to laugh. Because when the child laughs, your world lights up, and you know it. That's from the other side of the veil, dear ones. I want to give you an example of something. I want, to, I want to walk you through something. Human beings are very linear, and you have no frame of reference other than your own. This is not an indictment of who you are. This is simply the way it is. There can be no other way. Your only reference you have is what you see and who you are. If you had another reality to come and go in, You'd be able to then quote it and talk about it, but you don't. You have that reality, which is you. In this linear reality that you experience, there's one human, one name, one face. That's you. You see it every day in the mirror. You don't think of yourself as being multiple, even though you are in a multidimensional form or way. You don't really look at yourself and see your soul, although you have one. You don't look at yourself and see the creator, although you are part of it. Your reality is what you can see and touch and feel. You're told, by the way, that when you die, that soul of yours goes someplace and something happens, depending upon that which you believe. But how do you envision that? And I'll tell you. A human being sees themselves in their body representing their soul, then going to perhaps be judged or not, or to a party or not, but they see themselves as themselves in 3D, in their body, going perhaps to heaven. It's so interesting to hear some of the questions about heaven that the spiritualists have intercepted for years when humans will ask, what's heaven like? Can we, can we see like we see? Now, how can we see without eyes? You'll say. This is what the questions are. One of my favorites from my partner was, are there rocking chairs in heaven? <laughs> because the human who asked, just their favorite thing to do is to sit in the rocking chair and watch. And so you see, you put your own reality even on the esoteric things that are so grand from the creator about where you might go when you die. But you put that in a human form, in a three-dimensional form. You see you as you and ask that question, how can I see without eyes? I have a metaphor for you. You'll understand it. Let's pretend you're a caterpillar. Let's pretend in this story that a caterpillar has a little higher consciousness than it does and can think like you do. Let's say that caterpillar is pondering the same questions you have. When it goes into the deep sleep, you know where I'm going with this. The caterpillar itself, as it exists today on Earth, barely sees at all. They can differentiate light from dark and see shapes, and that's about it. It's good enough for them because they don't know any different. That's their life. And the caterpillar is asking itself, when I go into that deep sleep, into that great beyond where I am told I will fly like a bird, how will I be able to see? Will I be able to see as good as I do now? I hope so. Same question you're asking. How can I see without eyes? What's going to be like 
to not have my body and what, what, what can I see or feel and what is it that will take place? And that caterpillar is asking that and asking that and starting to ponder it, maybe even worry about it. And then it goes into the deep sleep. It goes into the cocoon and magic takes place. There aren't uh, many of these for you to look at, dear ones. That metamorphosis of that caterpillar is a miracle. When the caterpillar emerges as the butterfly and spreads its wings, indeed, to fly like a bird, let's look at the eyes. That caterpillar worried about the eyes. That butterfly has thousands of images that are clear. That butterfly can see ultraviolet light and polarized light. That butterfly can see the colors it needs to for the pollination of the flowers. It sees a hundred times, a thousand times better and differently than the caterpillar ever conceived sight would be when you take your last breath and a little time has passed your soul goes into a metamorphosis and I'll tell you that soul of yours starts to fly and you don't have eyeballs anymore you have sight you don't know what sight is. You have sight and, and the feelings and knowledge and awareness. You don't even know what those names are compared to what you will have. Because being a human on earth is so different from going home. It's a temporary hobbled condition that so many of you endure without joy. Never understanding that joy is sacred. Joy is from the creator. That's what's in heaven. Joy. And in you flying like a bird, you can not only see as you well thought you could as a human, but you can see light that you never saw before. All the spectrums. We sing your name in light. We cannot explain that which you become and who you are. Let me tell you the first thing that you feel. Oh, dear human, in linear form, you see yourself passing away. And you see yourself as a human being in linear form, perhaps walking a stairway. and You're going to meet somebody, perhaps at the pearly gates, as you're told, or whatever that which is the metaphor of, of leaving and, and coming and meeting somebody from the other side for the first time. What's it like? I'll tell you what it's like. Because that is going to be what you're going to remember. What it's like, the first thing you're going to meet and see and feel <laughs> is joy. That's what I want to tell you. That is probably one of the largest most profound truths I could give you. What's it like on the other side? Joyful. That is the essence of the creative source of the universe, of you, of your galaxy, that I am trying to pass on to you and tell you, when you find joy, you find everything. You find health. You find extension of life you find beauty you find reason for being alive you find peace and when this planet starts to become what it's going to be you're going to look back and say what made the difference and i'll tell you everybody could smile at everybody and you wouldn't distrust anyone for doing it this is the truth dear ones and it's why we talk so much about what we talk about. Bringing that which is from the other side of the veil to earth is the theme. 
Because as the veil starts to lift and lessen and be more transparent, you're going to find not just an increase in integrity, but an increase in reason for being, laughter, happiness, and joy. I would not give you these things if it were not the truth. Feel it in your very essence because you have the ability to discern right now if I'm giving you that which is true or not. It is built into you. It is part of you. Old soul, it's the lineage of why you're here today past 2012. To take the lid off of the old energy and escape into joy. I am cryon in love with humanity and for good reason. And so it is.